Let's bring in Catherine Wallace-Hughes in London. She's a spokesperson for Catholic Voices. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. First off, I want to talk a bit about the legacy that Pope Benedict has left behind. Yeah, um, it's, it's a great intellectual legacy. As your previous speaker was saying, he really opened up for Catholics the idea that a faith was something that we could not just believe, although he very much taught us to believe from the heart, but also something that we could think about, that we could reflect on, that really we could use our intellects and our minds as well as our hearts. So he was a great intellectual thinker and also a great shepherd, a great leader of his people, that he he cared for the Catholics all around the world. And that really showed in the way that he interacted with people, especially he had so many uh, pastoral journeys that he took abroad and visited us here in England, visited Turkey, visited, I think, 24 other countries. And really, each time he visited people, he was able to touch their hearts and to show that he was a leader of the church who really cared for the individual as well as for the whole community. Right, and his papacy was associated with his call for a return to fundamental Christian values and, attempt, and an attempt to confront the growing secularization of many Western Christian societies. How do you think that changed things in the Catholic Church? Look, it's a time, each, each pope is there for their own time, for their own um, what's going on in the world at that moment. And yes, Benedict was pope at a time when there was a lot of secularization. There's a lot of pushback against the church. So he oversaw the church at a time when it's shrinking in terms of numbers, but maybe he's calling for it, and definitely, sorry, he was calling for it to return um, in terms of fidelity, in terms of faithfulness to the teaching, so that maybe we're smaller in numbers than we used to be, but we're um, much more grateful than, than maybe in the past we were able to be. We really recognize this, this fantastic tradition we've been handed down for 2,000 years, and, um, and we're able to know what it is to be a Christian in the modern world, what it is to be a Christian in the 21st century, and to face that, whether it is in, in the UK, in Western Europe, in America, in all these countries where the society is changing, what does it mean to live in this society and yet to be separated from it? Um, and, and Benedict really helped to guide us through that time. Right, and while there was a lot of high highs, there was a lot of low lows as well. Uh, during his time as Pope, the scandal of the sexual abuse of children by Catholic priests unfolded, which was seen as a big failure by the Catholic Church at the time. Yeah, definitely. And that's something that is still being worked out now. The church has really made a lot of reforms under Benedict and subsequently under Pope Francis that these child abuse scandals we hope would never be able to happen again. There's been so many changes made to the way the church is run. But yes, unfortunately, Pope Benedict was um, did have to see through all of these scandals, all of this that came out. And he himself and, and all of us who are Catholics expressed great sorrow and regret at what had gone on. Um, it was a different time, and he has apologized so many times for his part in it and for the, the church as a whole, for what has gone on for all the people who have been hurt and wounded by the church. Um, but we hope now that the reforms that Benedict put in place and that have been carried on by Pope Francis will really bear fruit to mean that in the future, such things wouldn't happen again. It was an unusual time for the Vatican, wasn't it, when he had to step down from uh, his post and he had said he was doing so because of a lack of strength uh, and of uh, mind and body. What were some of the struggles he was experiencing at the time that led to his resignation? I mean, you know, you, you, he's a head of state and the head of a, a worldwide body of over a billion Catholics. And he was a man in his late 80s at the time. You know, there's not many people in the world that would still be expected to have this hugely active role of, like I say, visiting so many countries, um, being on call kind of 24-7 at that age. So I think a lot of it was just the, the physical weakness, you know, a man of that age still having to do such a, a hugely demanding role. But as well, he felt that maybe at that age, his mind wasn't as strong as it as it had been. Um, you know, none of us um, were there. We're not his doctors. We're not his physicians. So we don't know. He does seem to have been um, very mentally healthy. But obviously, as you get older, the, the mental processes do slow down. You're not as quick of thinking as, as maybe you used to be. Mm -hmm. um, we have the example of the Pope before him, Pope John Paul II, who clung on very, very heroically and courageously in the face of a long-term illness. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a difficult call to make. Should you carry on for the sake of the being that figurehead? But in Benedict's case, he realised that he couldn't actively give to it all that it required. Right. And so he said, well, he was going to have to step back from that. All right. Spokesperson for Catholic Voices, Catherine Wallace-Hughes. Thank you so much for joining us here on TRT World and giving that, sharing that insight with us.